This lesson deals with dependent sources. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 3 starting on page 38. Besides voltage sources and current sources that are constant or independent of the circuit they're connected in, there's another set of sources which are dependent upon the circuit that they're connected in. There are four of these. Let's take a look at them. The first dependent source shown here is a voltage controlled voltage source or VCVS for short. The voltage V2 is equal to this voltage, which we're going to show as a diamond shape with a plus and minus. And the value of this voltage source is going to be dependent on another voltage in the circuit times the scalar. Now we could also have a current controlled voltage source, or CCVS for short. We have a voltage between the plus and minus for V2, and it's equal to now R times I1, where I1 is the current in a short circuit. We're going to multiply that by a scalar. Likewise, we could define current sources that depend on voltage or current. Here is a voltage controlled current source, or VCCS for short, where the current, I2, is equal to this current. I'm going to show it with a diamond shape now instead of a circle, and whose value depends on a voltage in the circuit times the scalar. And lastly, there can be a current controlled current source, current here, is equal to this, but its value depends on a current in a short circuit times the scalar. Now because of our representations here of voltage and current, we do have a unit on the multiplying variable. For the voltage control voltage source, mu is dimensionless. It's volts per volt. For the current controlled voltage source, we're saying that a voltage is equal to R times I1, then R must be in ohms. Likewise here, we're saying that I2 is equal to G times V1. G would have to have units of mohs. And then lastly, this current is equal to this current times the scalar, so that would also be dimensionless, amps per amp. Well, given these four elements added to the other amounts we have, can we still do our node voltage analysis? And the answer is yes. It's much the same way we did it for independent sources, except now we have to account for these additional constraints caused by the dependent sources. Let's do an example to illustrate the node voltage method with dependent sources. We have a circuit with a voltage controlled current source, where V sub X is the voltage across this 1K resistor. Suppose we solve for V out and I out in terms of I sub S, our source. We can do that with a linear circuit. Everything is proportional to our input. We use the same five-step algorithm. First step is to pick a ground node. This has already been done for us, so we've got that finished. The second step is to define the node voltages and apply Kirchhoff's current law. So let's do that. Since this is called V sub X, I'll call this the X node, and this is called V out, I'll call it the out node. And the current that enters this node is I sub S, and I'll call this current I sub X, leaving the node in I sub Y. The current I sub X is equal to V sub X over 1K. The current I sub Y implies this direction of polarity by Ohm's law. V sub X minus V out divided by 2K is the current I sub Y. And I can group all the things that multiply V sub X and V out. I have 1 over 1K from here, and then 1 over 2K, and then I have a minus 1 over 2K. At node zero, I have I sub Y entering, the dependent source, V sub X over 500 entering, and I out leaving. I sub Y is equal to V sub X over 500, and that's going to be equal to the current here, which would be V out divided by 500. Found the current I sub Y before as V sub X minus V zero over 2K. Same term, same term. Put everything on the other side of the equation so we can then get things that multiply V sub X and V out. Putting this on the other side of the equation, I have V sub X times 1 over 2K with a minus sign. Also have V sub X again with a minus sign divided by 500. And then this on the other side of the equation becomes a plus sign, so 1 over 2K. And I also have 1 over 500 times V out. Then I've got two equations and two unknowns. I can write that in matrix form. I sub S is equal to 1 over 1K plus 1 over 2K times V sub X minus 1 over 2K times V out. Our second equation is 0 is equal to minus the quantity 1 over 2K plus 1 over 500 times V sub X, and then plus 1 over 2K plus 1 over 500 times V out. Now notice our independent source has again wound up on the left-hand side of the equation, but our dependent source has wound up on the right side of the equation because it depends on a voltage in the circuit, and those voltages are here in our unknowns, in this case V sub X. Steps 4 and 5 are to solve and complete the problem. We have our matrix I sub S is equal to 1 over 1K plus 1 over 2K, that's 1.5 milli, minus 1 over 2K, which is a half a milli, and then minus the quantity, 1 over 2K plus 1 over 500, that's 2.5 milli, 
I have the same coin again with a plus sign. So to solve for V out, I'm going to take the column associated with V out and put the left hand side of the equation there. Press multiply, get zero, and then minus a minus two and a half milli times I sub S. Product of these two is 3.75 micro, and then minus a minus times a minus is a minus. Product of these two is 1.25 micro, and that gives me 1,000 times I sub S. Then lastly, I out is just V out divided by 500, but V out is 1K times I sub S, and so I get two times I sub S. Current coming out of this circuit into the load is twice as what's coming in. And that can happen with controlled sources. We're getting our energy from a power supply. Next example is take a look at mesh current analysis with dependent sources. And here I have a circuit that has a voltage controlled voltage source controlled by a voltage V sub X. So let's find V out in terms of V sub S. Let's also solve for RN using the mesh current method. We'll use the same four steps we used previously. And steps one and two were to define the mesh current and then to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law. We'll call this mesh current I1 and mesh current I2. Assign voltages plus and minus. This was already defined, plus and minus. And of course, this was already defined. The rise in voltage is V sub S. The drop across here I'll call V of 50. Drop across here I'll call V of 1K. Drop across here V of 100. And then of course, 10 V sub X. The voltage across the 50 ohm resistor is just the mesh current I1 times 50. The voltage across the 1K resistor is 1K times I1, same mesh current. But the current that's flowing in here is going to be I1 minus I2 if we pick this polarity. So 100 times I1 minus I2, and then plus 10 times V sub X. But again, V sub X was 1K times I1. Let's have an equation now in the two unknowns, I1 and I2. Let's add up all the results. We have 50 plus 1,000 plus 100 plus 10K. That's 11,150 times I1. And then I've got a minus 100 times I2. Let's go around the mesh number two clockwise. The rise in voltage is 10 V sub X. The rise in voltage is the voltage across the 100 ohm resistor. And then the drop is V out. V sub X is 1K times I1. So we'll multiply that by 10. The voltage across the 100 ohm resistor is again I1 minus I2 times 100. And that's going to equal the output, which is just I2 times 5K. Put all this on the other side of the equation. So I've got this on the other side as a minus 10,000 times I1. There's also a, another minus 100 times I1. So I get a minus 10,100 I1. And then I get a plus 100 I2 plus 5K times I2. I've got two equations, two unknowns. Put this in the matrix form. V sub S is equal to 11.15K times I1 minus 100 times I2. So minus 100 times I2. Second equation is that zero is equal to minus 10.1K times I1, and then plus 5.1K times I2. Let's solve for the current I1. Using Kramer's rule, I'll take the left-hand side of the equation and put it into column associated with I1, which is column one. Keep the rest of the matrix the same, and then take the determinant of the circuit equations we have here. This times this is 5.1K times V sub S minus zero, and then the product of these two is 56.865 million, minus a minus a minus, which is minus, product of these two is 1.01 million. And that ratio is 91.380 micro times V sub S. Likewise, you can solve for I2 by putting the left-hand side of the equation into column two, product is zero, and then minus a minus, plus 10.1K times V sub S, and then our denominator determinant is the same. And that turns out to be 180.825 micro times V sub S. Well, back in the original schematic, V out was I2 times 5K. Multiplying that times the value here, I get 0.904 or 904 milli times V sub S. So I have the output in terms of the input. Now if you solve for the resistance looking into the circuit, called it RN, that would be V sub S divided by I1. That's the current coming out of V sub S. So that's just V sub S, and then we know that I1 is 91.308 micro times V sub S. The V sub S is cancel. I get one over this, which is 10.95 K ohms. Now, the controlled source has changed the effective resistance of the circuit by manipulating the currents and the voltages in the circuit. What's interesting here though, is that the input resistance is independent of the value of V sub S. That's because I1 is proportional to V sub S, so it'll cancel out. And these are dependent sources and some examples on how to write node equations and mesh equations.